Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with another video. Today I'm setting up my husband's bullet journal for October with a really sweet theme close to both of our hearts, Winnie the Pooh. If you are somehow unfamiliar with Winnie the Pooh, this is a best-selling classic children's book written by A.A. A. Milne, published in 1926 and illustrated by E.H. Shepard. My husband and I both grew up with these stories, and for our anniversary, which was just a few weeks ago, we went to a special exhibit about the creative process of publishing this story that is currently on at the Royal Ontario Museum. The exhibit covered the writing process, the history, the creative collaboration between Milne and Shepard, and there were a bunch of original process sketches and drawings of Shepard's at the exhibit, and it was a really cool experience to go through this exhibit together. And as we were walking, I kept seeing these original sketches and just thought that this would make such a nice bullet journal theme. And luckily, my husband was totally on board, so I'm doing my best to recreate these original sketches by E. H. Shepard, and you may recognize recognize some of them if you grew up with Winnie the Pooh like we did. If you are a fan of Winnie the Pooh, I would love to know who your favorite character is. My favorite is Piglet, and my husband's favorite is Tigger, and we both have a giant soft spot for Eeyore. So let me know who your favorite is in the comments down below. I'm really curious. For the cover page, I really wanted to recreate this specific illustration. It's this fun one with Tigger falling out of a tree, and Christopher Robin, Pooh, Eeyore, and Piglet are all holding a sheet trying to catch him. I did my best to match the original style, and I used a variety of Sakura microns in different nib sizes to try to get that sketch look. Starting with a finer nib to get all of the details roughed in, and then going in with a thicker nib to add bolder lines to certain areas. I'm doing my best to use a pretty loose hand, again, so it looks more like a sketch. It's not really that minimalist monoline bold style. I toyed with the idea of adding color, but ended up deciding to leave it as is this black and white sketch style, again, because that's what we saw in the exhibit. And all of these original sketches done by E. H. Shepard were done in pencil or ink or a combination of both. I love that this theme is not only a reminder to my husband of one of his favorite childhood memories, these stories, but also a reminder of our trip to the museum to see the exhibit together on our anniversary. Once I finished the cover page sketch, I'm moving over to the monthly calendar. I am once again doing a single page calendar. These have been working really well for my husband lately. I I am shifting the calendar up on the page a little bit more this time because I'm making the headers smaller than I have in previous months. I'm going to be using my stamp set that you can see in the upper right hand corner of the screen. The stamp set I'm using will be linked down below along with all of the supplies I used in this video. But because I'm using the stamp set for the headers, I don't need quite as much room up there. But I do want a little bit more room at the bottom of the spread so I can add some illustrations there. The drawing I'm going to add here at the bottom of the monthly spread is possibly my favorite from the entire exhibit. I actually took a picture of this sketch that was hanging on the wall and used it as a reference for this drawing because I hadn't seen this drawing before and I haven't been able to find it online even when I was searching for reference images for creating these spreads, but it's just so adorable and I felt like they were the perfect sequence of drawings to add to the bottom of this spread here. I really love how well this series of images demonstrates Shepard's ability to create a sense of movement through his illustration. You can really feel the wind as Piglet is walking through it. Even though these are just still images, the way that Piglet is leaning forward into the wind, his ears are streaming back behind him, his eyes are squinted almost fully shut, and you can also see a leaf being picked up by the wind next to him and floating by. And it's just such a perfect combination of these little indicators that add up to give you a really clear feel of what Piglet is experiencing without needing any words at all. Plus, as I mentioned, Piglet is my absolute favorite character from Winnie the Pooh, and I wanted yet another reason to include even more drawings of Piglet. <laughs> One of my favorite stuffed animals from childhood was Piglet, and I still have it today. Once I finished all the drawings, I went back in with my stamp set to add the header on the cover page and also the header for the days of the week on the monthly calendar. And then we're moving on to the next spread, which is going to be a little bonus spread for this month. I decided to add a quote page, which I don't always do. I suppose I did it last month as well, so maybe this is becoming our new normal, but 
Up until last month, I didn't do this too regularly. The real purpose behind this was, again, just me wanting another excuse to draw some of our favorite characters. And there are a couple quotes from Winnie the Pooh that I just find so touching, but this one in particular is my favorite. So I thought I would take the opportunity to add this little quote page, starting with Eeyore looking for his tail. So cute. This is from another really adorable series of drawings, but I just picked my favorite of the set. Then we have Piglet, who's just enjoying a quiet moment alone. Next up, there's Tigger bounding along, as he is wont to do. And lastly, we have Pooh curiously inspecting some footprints. The opposite page is going to be the start of my husband's notes pages, and I decided to draw this iconic image of Pooh holding onto a balloon, and the bees are coming after him, and he just looks mildly concerned in his way of being only ever mildly worked up about anything. Going back in to add the quote, which is, If you live to be a hundred, I want to live to be a hundred minus one day, so I never have to live without you just got me choked up all over again just reading it. It's such a good representation of how it feels to finally find your person, whether that's a best friend or a partner or whoever that is for you, having that realization that you can't imagine, you can't conceive of a life without them. And it's both a deep gratitude and happiness that you found that person, but also that worry and fear that you'll lose them. So I just think that's such a beautiful way of expressing that feeling. And I'm going to stop talking about it because I'm going to start crying. And Yoda noticed that I was done and was getting ready to film the little flip through footage and decided to help as she does. She always seems to find the perfect time to demand my attention. So now that Yoda is satisfied, I'll do a little flip through so you can see the spreads. Quite simple. I know a lot of you like my husband's setups because they are a lot more on the simple side compared to my own bullet journal and that he uses fewer spreads and different spreads than I do. So I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it. It really did feel extra special, especially since we only just recently went to the exhibit. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like if you did. And before I go, I'm going to take a quick moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Danica, Michaela, Jasmine, Angela, Kat, Martha, Indy, Roxana, Mary, Jennifer, Bridget, Kayla, Haley, Kat, Sarah, Taylor, Leslie, Victoria, Janet, and Julia. Welcome all of you to the squad. I am so excited to see you and have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And if you're looking for something else to watch, I recommend you check out my October setup in my own bullet journal. I went with a vintage anatomical drawings, mildly creepy vibes theme. And I really like how it turned out. I'm proud of it. So check it out if you haven't seen it already. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.